Welcome back to The Manor, Julian McBain here, and today we're going to be talking about crafting. Crafting is the last of the big three professions, being hunting, mining, and crafting, that you find in almost every MMORPG. And this one is going to be a bit different from the others because I'm speaking more from a technical perspective and less from an experiential one. So I have experience in mining, although it's not huge. You saw that during my mining video. I have a lot of experience hunting, as I'm sure you can tell by the every video I've put out is pretty much a, as a mining as a hunting video rather. Um, but crafting is its own beast, and I think there's a crafting machine at Arc Staging. If there isn't a construction machine at Arc Staging, then we will go to a place where I know there's a construction machine. Um, ha. I don't even, oh wait, in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so crafting is honestly where you can earn. It's where a lot of the, those who have been fairly successful at earning money on Entropia without being a landowner, they've probably done it in crafting. Uh, there is on record a family, a mother and son team that were earning 3,000 US dollars a month by crafting guns in Entropia Universe and selling them to players. That being said, there are a few things to really key in on on crafting. And after I go through a short bit on how to start crafting, I am going to key in on those pieces. So if you're just starting out, you're going to want to pick up and you can pick this up off the auction house. Uh, I am in the wrong menu. A An explosive projectiles blueprint. Okay. Um, yeah, because this one requires, and the reason why is because explosive projectiles only require nanocubes. Nanocubes are the only material that you can buy from the trade terminal. Other blueprints, while very, very good and will help you to build up your ability, require other materials like this basic sheet metal blueprint. And we're going to kind of centerize my inventory for a minute. Requires a narcon uh, narconesium, narconism ingot, an LCNS liquid gel, rather. I, I'm probably murdering the pronunciations of that. I don't care. Um, welding wire blueprint requires Losterium ingots, alternative ingots, vibrant sweat, and Osprey ingots. And that's for welding wire. And I think this one's a limited. So this one actually has, as you can see on this limited one, the, right underneath the title of welding wire blueprint, you can see remaining attempts. That means you can only use this blueprint 109 times, and then pff, it's gone. Just like any other limited item. Same with this one. This is actually for a, uh, a sword, the LB-15. It only has 13 attempts. Look at all of the things it requires. 36 basic sheet metal, two simple one conductors, two simple one plastic springs. I don't know why it would need springs, but whatever. A cobalt ingot, root acid, five metal rods, and 140 nanocubes per attempt. And that doesn't mean you're going to succeed. So, okay. So we have our explosive projectiles blueprint. What do we do next? Now we're going to go into the trade terminal. We're going to go to components and we're going to buy some nanocubes. And I think 20 ped will do it for this video because it's not going to be, we're, we're not, we're, we're going to be not going over the, the half hour mark on this video, I believe. So I'm just going to quickly record that purchase. Where'd my keyboard go? Whoops. Because as you all know, I use a spreadsheet to meticulously log every purchase and sale. So I know what my profitability is at the end of the day. Currently for this year, we're down about 1,689 ped, which is a hell of a lot better than last year. Which means I'm, I'm growing, not where I want to be yet. Um, then we go over to the construction machine and you select the blueprint. We're going to be constructing the explosive projectiles. As you can see, our success rate is about 89.2%. And with all of the nanocubes I bought, we have a thousand clicks, attempts, which are called clicks. We construct, max that out. I want it on quantity, not condition, because this is a throwaway material. And hit construct. So they're called clicks because back in the day, you had to sit here and click every attempt. You couldn't just set it to auto and let it cycle itself. 
Nowadays, this type of crafting is actually really easy because I can set this up to do this and just fuck off for a while. The piece of this that makes it a little tougher is that this is what you have to do until you have the skills to get the higher level stuff. Like, no joke. You're going to sit here and you're just going to craft. I didn't know that shrapnel came out of this. That's interesting. Um, and this is going to gain your skills. But this is basically literally burning ped. I hate to say it like that, but that is the case. Because I know for a fact I am not going to be getting back as much in ped as I would have for my, um, my what I put into it. Now, it looks like they have tweaked the way it works. We're getting some shrapnel back, which is better than getting nothing. There was a time when you just... And I mean, you still have failures. You can see with my improved um, skill abilities, I'm getting a lot more near successes, which is saving me some pegs. I'm getting half of it back. Because each of these clicks is two peck. If I'm getting one peck back, I'm at least getting half my money back on each failed click. Um... But you do this, and you build up the skills. Then you find something tougher to do. That's where your basic sheet metal comes in. It requires more stuff. You're going to build that one up. And I believe this one's... T they're both blueprint number ones. But you're going to need basic sheet metal for other stuff, like the sword. So your outlay is not just on gaining the skills. It's on gaining the materials. Now, there are a couple ways you can deal with materials. I'm sure most crafters probably do the easy thing and go and pick them up off the auction house. Which, honestly, is kind of the smart way to do it. The other way you can do it is you can go out there and dig up the stuff you need yourself. And as you can see, some of the better hits are above the, the two-peck return. Um, and maybe you go out and mine all the materials for the things that you craft, and then you put them together and turn them into clicks and then you're you're hitting it from multiple directions at the same time you're still going to in the end end up using that ped to build this up now in the end items that are crafted give you a lot of markup this sword for instance this is an lb35 this is the standard sword that i use at this time uh it's been used partially so of course the markup isn't shown on it because why wouldn't it be um and unfortunately, I'm stuck where I am if I'm going to keep crafting. But the standard markup for that sword is like 133%. Ah, uh, no, no, I just lied. I think it's 120. But still, that's 20% over TT value when you go to sell it on auction. And so, and on something like that, this is where metal residue comes in because. When you make the attempt, you can go for quantity or condition. The higher the quantity, the lower the condition. And that will also affect your success rate. But you can use metal residue to make up that ped value in TT by using metal residue to make it higher quality. And I don't know if it, if it inc increases the success rate on higher condition or if it increases the condition on high, quality, high, high quantity, low condition attempts. And so if there's a crafter out there watching this, please go ahead and comment to let us all know. Um, as, you, as I'm sure you can all tell, I don't craft a whole lot. Um, I do on occasion, I want to build my engineering skills, which is another thing that we need to get into here. Building the skills doesn't just require cycling nanocubes for days on end. You can request a, a billet on a mothership, and you can repair the mothership, which builds your engineering skills, which increases your crafting ability, which is still going to burn wet metal wire, or welding wire and an rk5 but you're not just sitting here reading a book while your avatar cycles stuff um other things you can do is you can stand at camp icarus or in other parking areas and offer to repair people's vehicles for tips or not even for tips just free repairs that's how a lot of people build up their skills in crafting by offering repairs to players because it gives them a good reputation and it also builds up the skills that they need Um, so some things to remember about crafting one you have to have a good read on the market when you start crafting in earnest 
okay? If you are crafting weapons, make sure it's a weapon people are buying or people should be interested in buying because of their hunting perfection. There are players out there that will create a market for something if there's something is on the offer. That doesn't mean you want to build 17, you know, LB60s where there might only be five players on all of Entropia Universe that use them. And they may not even necessarily use them all the time. You have to have a good read on the market. You have to be able to see what people are buying. You know, you're going to have to do some experimenting. Look at seeing where the markup is. Is the markup worth the amount of ped you have to spend in order to make the thing that you're trying to sell? Crafting is harder in the way that you have to have a lot more actual business sense to be an effective, profitable crafter than you do for hunting or mining. No, hunting is easy. You go out and, and every hunter knows that you're not going to make a profit off hunting. At least not at the out, uh, not, not on its face. The, what we get out of hunting is really the enjoyment of hunting. Mining is a little bit different. Mining you get, you have a good chance at profit if you know where to mine. And miners learn where to mine and they mine up the good stuff and then they go sell it for markup and they're usually pretty well off. Does that mean they're all making a profit? Hell no. But it does mean you have some successful miners out there who are extremely savvy, know what the hell they're doing, and go and dig up the stuff that the crafters need and the crafters want and the crafters are in high demand for so that they can craft the things that they need to craft to make their money. Crafters are largely in the same position. They have to read the market and know what the players that are hunting need, whether it be guns or armor or clothing because there's there's not very many tailors out there and that's why clothing has such high markup H clothing has absurd markup because there's so few tailors in this game in the platform and there's so few tailors on the platform probably because it's a pain in the ass i actually looked at trying to make a piece of clothing and see what it required it required like 12 or 13 different items and you have to buy them in stacks that's just ridiculous But because of that, someone who's willing to go through the trouble of doing all that shit is going to wind up with high markup items. And they're going to read the market and they're going to they're going to get the benefit of doing things that way. Now, all of this takes time and all of it takes pet. And like I said before, this is the most pet intensive because it's literally just dumping pet into the trade terminal to pull out nano cubes to sit here and cycle in order to create explosive projectiles for hours on end. Or going and sitting on a mothership and repairing the mothership for hours on end. Is it always going to be fun? No. It's part of the grind. It's a totally different grind. Thankfully, this is the type of grind where, again, you can set it up and you can walk away for a while and do something else. Um, but this is crafting in a nutshell. And is it a bit simpler and, and, and I'm probably oversimplifying it. I know there are going to be crafters out there that are just cringing at the way that I presented this. And by all means, please drop comments. Tell me where I'm wrong. Because I am not as experienced as you are in crafting. I only look at what I can see. And from what I can see, and from my sense of, of what I do in the real world and where I've been in the real world, this is the way I see it working. And I've talked to I've talked to some crafters. I've talked to Laura Spade, who says, has done quite a bit of crafting. Um, who else have I talked to that crafts? Uh, it might have just been him. It might have just been him. I thought I talked to a couple others early on. I, I talked to a couple others, but it was like years ago. But I've been playing this for a while now. It was, it was at, at least a year, year and a half ago. It was when I was still pretty new on, on the platform. And it's just, there is a lot, like any part of Entropy Universe, there's a lot of grind. And this is literally being a factory. That's what this is. You're turning yourself into a factory when you do this. And they actually address this in the in the manhwa, so Korean comic called The Gamer, which I encourage everyone to read. It's freaking awesome. I actually need to go back and reread it because there's a huge amount of update to it that I have not read. But I need to remember all the shit that happened before. So <laughs> I need to go back and reread it. But it addresses the fact that in MMOs, in, in You'll have to forgive the translator because their English is not 100% clean, but they do a really good job. Uh, in MMOs, you have people who are factories. This is the very meaning of being a player factory. I am literally sitting here pumping out explosive projectiles. That's all I'm doing. 
I'm also producing quite a bit of metal residue because, you know, I'm not... At some point, I need to, like, do something about this. And here's all the metal residue I've, I've produced during this. You just sit here and you produce. But if you're willing to put the time, if you're willing to put the money, if you're willing to put the, the effort in, just like in real life, just like in the hunting, just like in the mining, you're going to be able to produce something that people need, and you might make a profit off of it. Now, the key word there is might. In my opinion... In my opinion, the most likely place over the long term, and by long term, we're talking like mm, years, like many years. And it looks like we just got a blueprint. I think it was a welding wire three. Yeah, 120 attempts. I don't think, was that the one we had before? I think that's the one we had before. I thought I got a welding wire blueprint. Or maybe, oh, you know what? I wonder if they stack now. I wonder if those stack. Because I don't believe I had that many attempts. That's cool. Um, so if, if anyone knows that one, please let me know. But I think those stacked. So, um, yeah, because I only had 109 attempts before and it, it was an 11 peck drop. So there, yeah, they stacked. That's awesome. Um... Lost my train of thought there. Oh, this is the most likely place that if you're smart and savvy, this is where you start a business in Entropia Universe. This is the classical place to start a business. And just like a business, there's going to be a huge upfront investment because you're investing in yourself, your skills as an avatar. And then you have to put the work in to figure out where the market trends. Very much like any classic business you see, any storefront you see, it might be worth your time to go buy a storefront in the platform, whether it's a shop at like uh, Fort Medusa, or if it's a stall in um, Corinth or on one of the other planets, or if to have an apartment with a bunch of shopkeeper pads so you can sell your stuff there, or if you just want to pay all the auction fees to not have to deal with adver uh, advertisements and with all of the carny barking you might have to do then you can just throw them up on the auction house and pay the auction fees to Mindark, who would be more than happy to take that auction fee from you because that's how they pay their bills. Not pitching at Mindark for that. That is that is what it is. You know, we, we have to accept that there is an expense associated with playing this, this game on this platform, and part of that is paying Mindark their due when they do auction fees. But that's a trade-off you have to make a decision on. And let's face it, shopkeeper pads are not cheap. Apartments are not cheap. And especially shops are not cheap. Shops go for ridiculous money, especially like in one of the malls. And then if you're going to put it in a shop, you got to advertise the shop because no one goes to the malls unless they have a purpose. And if you're a new shop in a mall, you're going to have to advertise your existence and put things there that people are actually going to want to buy without paying the auction fees. Uh, even then, there's still going to be a transaction fee, which might equal the auction fee. It may not be worth it for you. It might not be worth it for you. It's, and the, the benefit to a shop in that case is there's no competition there. When you go in the auction house, you've got the big thing, and everyone who's selling that same item has all their stuff on there, and it's just based on price. When you're in a shop, you can sell it a little cheaper than the auction house, and you go in there, and you buy the thing off the table, and the only person whose wares are in that shop are you. And that's it. Ooh, 10-pack drop. That's good. Or a click. So, okay, we have gone through the basics of crafting. I know that this is a shorter video. Oh, it's, it's not really a shorter video. It's still, it's still at the 20 minute mark. But the, the purpose of this video is to kind of illustrate the third of the three basic professions. And I will admit, I do not spend enough time working on this profession. Part of the reason I don't spend as much time working on this profession is because this is the, this is the sum of the whole profession, right? If... If I wanted to do this, this would be my day job. Or I'd have this running in the background during my day job, which my day job does not allow, so I don't do it. It'd be kind of cool if he did, though. I could probably convince him. But I can't bring my gaming rig to work. So, which, you know, that kind of sucks, but that's life. 
Um, but if you want to set up a factory, this is the basic means of doing so. There's a lot of nuance. I know I'm missing out on some of that nuance because I don't necessarily have the experience to do so. If you are a crafter, especially if you are like a pro crafter in Entropia Universe, please, please, please drop some advice for other players in the comments below. They're all welcome. I do ask that you kind of go gentle on me if you're going to flame me or if you're going to criticize me. Criticize me as long as it's constructive. Um, I'm all for that. You know, just follow Will Wheaton's run, one rule. That's my only request. Um, because the purpose of these videos is to help players. So, okay. We are going to stop here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. As always, everyone, I appreciate the support. Uh, please consider going over to patreon.com slash Julian McBain to pick up the modern Entropian, which this whole run is about. Kind of breaks down some of the subjects, and I comment on them. Not into the depth that I do in the ebook, but I do comment on them. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons, Spectrum3900, Jason Lambertson, and Red Kryptonite. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.